So recently, you actually did a partnership with Condor Blue yes, yeah. and everything like that. We actually see the They're merch here. right over there. There they are. And you got to do your own cables and wires. And it's like, this is really dope. And you're like, you know, one of the faces of the brand now. And like, how does a partnership like that happen? That was like super random because um, I had been working with Armando, who worked a lot with Lucas from Condor Blue, and then mm-hmm. they were just like, I was our, joking our around. Our friend Armando, yeah. Yeah, and I was like, man, it would be so cool if we made like pink cables. And they're like, we could do that. And they're like, what color pink do you want? And I kind of sent a color pink that was like my favorite and then – Yeah, it's your hot pink, your signature hot pink. Yeah. yeah. And so, do you know the hex value for your pink? So my – this used to be my favorite color was FF1 CAE. That used to be my favorite. I'm not sure the hex on this one, but it's probably pretty similar. See, that's how you know you're a graphic designer. <laughs> <laughs> I know. I even bought like, I think the domain for it. Like I was obsessed for a while. Mm. Um, but yeah, no, it's, it's been super fun. And it's interesting because everyone, some people are like, well, can you make another color? I'm like, that's not the point. The point was <laughs> we want, well, I mean, I wanted pink cables. Yeah. And I there definitely is a niche market for it. But I also liked it because... Like, people aren't going to steal your cable unless they have the same one mm-hmm. because it's very identifiable. Yes. I also love that they're super high quality. And, yeah, it's just – it's been so much fun because yeah. I, I really don't ever have merch, mm-hmm. which is – I've noticed that. I know. I know. It's probably my biggest downfall. But every time I start doing merch samples, I get a bunch of stuff and I'm like, I don't like any of this. Yeah. And I'm like, I wouldn't wear this, so I don't want someone else to And you don't want to push it. anything on your audience yeah. that they won't like and they won't, like, enjoy. I'm sure it would be perfectly fine, but I think my standard is <laughs> it was set too high that I just gave up. There's nothing wrong with having standards on top of having boundaries. More creators should actually have standards and boundaries in terms of who they work with and what's acceptable to right. them and what they're willing to put their name and their brand behind and what they're willing to sell. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. So – with that in mind, how do you run your creator business? And you can tell us a little tiny bit about your income streams. You don't have to tell us yeah. how much. But no, yeah. I mean, it, I mean, obviously, I think for a lot of us, like, I feel I treat kind of AdSense as like a salary. Mm-hmm. Like that's going to be pretty consistent, you know, throughout the year of like the ups and downs of bet- depending upon CPMs. But I mean, a lot of my stuff comes through brand deals. I also do a lot of consulting. Mm-hmm. Um, Obviously, like we have things like the the cables now, which is really fun. Yeah, um, I assume the deal on the cables is a royalty mm-hmm. for every yeah. cable sold or something like yeah. that. Yeah, and then you know, there's other things like even like my book. Like I think there's still some small revenue stream yep. from that, like the audio portion. Yep, I I loved the audio book. I love that Thank you read you. it yeah. in your voice and everything like that. I listen to it once a year. It sits oh, wow. proudly on my book. Yeah, I, li- I listen to it once a year, especially whenever I'm feeling burnt out. Mm-hmm. I like listen to it or like. Well, actually, I don't burn out that often. It's like whenever I start to feel the symptoms, like you said, right. to where I'm like, mm, I could maybe yeah. I need. To. It's like it, it's so nice and refreshing hearing oh, from another great. creator yeah. and hearing the journey. It's also one of you were one of the inspirations for me writing my book. No, I uh, yeah, I was so excited. So thank you so much. I'm so excited to check it out. Yeah, yeah. No, th- I'd love to know when you get a chance, like you know what you think about it. But I, like, so I love that you have you do have some diversity in your revenue streams. You don't really do the merch as much, but you have partnerships on products like with Condor yeah. Blue. Do you have any other partnerships on products like that? Um, oh, wait. You have the Motion VFX. Oh, yeah. So we did something with Motion VFX, which was really fun. So we did a plug-in pack. So like small things like that. And then obviously like affiliates. Yep. Um, you know, random things like that. It's, it's always like so hard to like really think about it because it's just kind of like. No, me, you... I'm getting like 20, 25, 10, 99 forms every year. So I'm losing track yeah. myself. So I understand. But and I... I'm like that guy. I'm that right. income streams guy. I'm yeah. Like, yeah. No, yeah. You're, I love like your analytical breakdown. It's always like super helpful for me too because it's like, yeah. oh yeah, there is more that I could be doing here, here, here. But I mean, I do a lot of brand deals, yep. which I'm super grateful for. But sometimes those take so much energy to create, to script, Working that, with that brands back and forth. there's not room for other things. Right. Yeah. And then sometimes I'm like, oh, my gosh, I haven't even done a video for fun. I need to, like, throw something else in here that's not a brand. But, I mean, I really love doing the sponsored stuff just obviously because you you're, you are getting paid for it. But it's fun to kind of have sort of like that script in mind where yep. it's like here's what they want. And I've always liked creating for a purpose too. So yes. it's like here it is. So – uh, yeah, so I, and now I have to kind of go back and be like, okay, so now I need to be my own brand. Hey, Justine, we need you to create these videos. So talking to myself. Basically. Yeah, no, that's the thing. Being your own brand, mm-hmm. having things you're proud of, that you have ownership of. That's something I think about and talk about a lot. And you no, know, I think it's really great that you still do a lot of this purely just for fun. Mm-hmm. Um I think that gets really hard for people who are career creators, but it's also so refreshing to hear someone who's almost literally 20 years into this. Say that they still enjoy it, that they still do it for enjoyment. Yeah. It is a business. You take it seriously, but you still make room 
for just joy. Well, and I think that's what's super important too is like making that time to just do something for fun. <laughs> like, you know, even like the camera cam stuff. It's like, you know, me and my sister aren't getting paid to be here. Like yeah. we're here because we want to. And the fact that Sony has kind of partnered with us to kind of just bring together our, a, a bunch of friends and yeah. have a cool experience. That means more to me than like you can even put a price tag on. So, oh, facts. And like, I've enjoyed it. I told you that the last camera camp we did before the pandemic, Montana, literally ranks out of like – out of the, all the days that I've been alive, it ranks in like oh, you know amazing. some of the top twenty days that I've ever lived. Same, no, 